Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. We'll look at verse 1 through 12. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 1 through 12. First Timothy chapter 6, verses 1 through 12. The title message today is Flee These Things, out of verse 11. Flee These Things. That's the title of the message today. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 1. The Bible says, Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved, partakers of the benefit these things teach and exhort. If any man teach otherwise, and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and stripes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such withdraw thyself. Verse 6, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which draw men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things, and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. Brother Richard, can you pray for the message? Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for another day of salvation. Thank you for a Bible-believing King James uh, church that we may attend to, a local church, Lord. I pray unto you that you fill Pastor Jay with the Holy Spirit so that he may preach a convicting sermon unto us, Lord, so that we may change from inside out, Amen. and that we may be a good witness unto you in this God-forsaken world, reaching out to all the lost souls out there, as many lost souls as we can, Lord. And, and always keep our eyes on you, yes. Lord God, and nothing else, not money, not work, not school. Our main focus should be on you, Amen. Lord God, Almighty Jesus Christ. Thank you for coming down to earth in the flesh of man and going, taking up the cross, bearing all the sins yes. of the world, Lord, and shedding your blood to wash away the sins for those of them that call out unto you to save them from hell, Lord. <laughs> Thank you for all that you have done. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. 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 Flee these things. You, you will flee from a lot of things. In this day and age, you know, number one thing is that people are fleeing from war in the land of Ukraine. Ukraine, if you didn't know, is the largest land in Europe right after Russia. It's a huge country. And Ukraine is a beautiful country. And there was some documentary made, and I saw they are you know, you would think that that's like, you know, somewhere in the Rockies, you know, here, Alaska. It's a beautiful place. However, people have to flee that place. Why? Because of war, because they want to survive. And as Christians, you know, we're in a spiritual battle. And if you want to survive, you have to flee certain things. You can't be unequally yoked together. You can't be at a place as a Christian you shouldn't be. And you shouldn't be that person who draws other people in. You know, you, you're going to be that person being used by the devil. It's a great thing that you're here today. And it's a great thing that people who's worshiping the Lord in their you know, respective local Bible-believing churches, if they are able to go to. Because you have flee from 
those apostate churches. You have flee from those churches that teach wrong doctrine and those churches that do not have salvation. Many churches out there claim to teach the word of God, claim to be God's church. However, as some of you have come from those churches out there, as I have come from those churches, there's no teaching of the doctrine. You go there, you know, some do teach gospel, right? They teach Jesus Christ died for your sins, and they teach the salvation. So unlike many other countries out there, especially in America, many of the churches, whether they're, you know, I don't know about right now, in the past, you know, Methodist, you know, Baptist, you know, they were teaching the right salvation plan. So people do get saved. However, afterwards, there's nothing, right? You're, you know, it's like, you know, you're born again, and you're a little baby. And then 10 years has gone by, and you're the same little baby, right? 20 years have gone by, and you're the same little baby, right? You have not grown at all. And you have to flee from those places. And if you're listening, and you know, if you had any doubts of going back and forth, right, you have to weigh the evidence, and evidence is obvious. If I've been here, wherever you are, and I have not grown at all, even though right doctrine is being taught, you know, right preaching is being preached, then you have to make a choice. You don't go to church to make friends. Right. That's the number one thing. You don't go to church to do business. Okay. You know, many people go to church to find a mate, right? I mean, I guess it's better than going to clubs, but who knows? I mean, if, if people aren't saved, you know, they're still the same. You know, you shouldn't be unequally yoked together. But you're sitting here today because you fled those things. You flee all those, you know, wrong doctrines you know, where you don't grow. Amen. Spiritually speaking, if you don't grow, what's going to happen? Right? You become a dead in Christian. You, you can't do anything. Yes. If, don't get me wrong, you know, salvation should be preached on the pulpit. But if salvation is preached on the pulpit every single week, then what's going to happen? Right? You're not going to know other doctrines. Right? You've got to be just stuck at that. Salvation, that's it. Right. You're not going to go beyond that salvation. There's got to be no eternal security. There's got to be no doctrines on, you know, millennialism, you know, second advent. You know, forget about dispensationalism, right? Rightly dividing the word of truth. That's why many of the fundamentalists out there need to flee from their churches. Why? Because they don't like deep doctrine. You and I should be blessed that we're at a Bible-believing church where every word is preached from Genesis 1 all the way to Revelation. A lot of churches out there, so-called independent KJV-only churches, they don't teach the whole Bible. And we know people who came from those churches. They're in our church right now. And you know what you have gone through. And you know how starved you were. Because, okay, I'm saved now. You know, you've been teaching me John 3.16 for the past 20 years. <laughs> Can I have something else today, right? I mean, we don't really go to Revelation too much, right? And we barely touch any of the minor prophets. I mean, of course, we go to Genesis because we like those stories. Exodus, of course. So don't go to numbers and beyond, you know, that gets a little too deep, right? And their reasoning is that, you know, you want to grow the church. And reasoning is that you don't want to offend anybody. If a preacher's point, a preacher is there to not offend anybody, then you have to flee. Yes. I mean, Jesus Christ was the most hated person. What do you think about Apostle Paul? I mean, when he was preaching, going door to door, city to city, he was a hated man. 
And if you go to a church and everybody loves that preacher, something's wrong. I mean, there are Joe Austins out there, TD, but JT, you know, forgive me, prosperity guy, TD Jakes, right? You know, there's Heimers of the world out there. You know, there are all those people out there. And if you really want to grow, and if you want to live a separated, holy life, you have to flee. You have to flee these things. You have to flee them. There's nothing good that's going to come to you if you stick around them. I had a wrong idea. Right after I found the truth, King James Bible, you know, I, I got assurance of salvation, I thought I could change the people at the old church. Never happens. Never. Instead, they look at you with quizzical look, and, you know, I'm sure inside they have their indignation, right? Man, this guy, now he thinks he knows the truth, and he's preaching to me. You know? Instead of receiving the word of God, you know, with a pure heart, with an innocent heart. That's why you have to be careful with who you associate yourself with. And number one thing is, you know, you have to flee those who ignore the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. That's number one. You have to ignore them, and you have to flee them. And what does that mean? You can't associate yourself with compromisers. Amen. There are too many compromisers out there when it comes to the Word of God. Yes. We stand for whatever what the Bible says. Amen. And then sometimes these issues come up, right? We believe in public ministry. Who was the greatest street preacher ever? That's Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And we go out there and preach the word. Why do you think some churches don't preach the word out on the street? Why? Because they're ignoring the words of the Lord, Jesus Christ. And if you are that person who's attending those kind of churches, when you know there are Bible local believing churches out there, then why do you stay there? That is the question. It's because of your carnal lust. Don't give anybody excuses. You're there because your flesh loves to be there. Right. Even though your spirit it is oppressed, right? It is grieving the Holy Ghost, yeah. but you're still there. Why? Because you love the people. That's right. Word of God is not number one in your life. Pleasing the Lord is not number one in your life. That's why you don't flee those things. Right. That's what cheaters do. Right. Infidelity, why does it happen, right? Whether you're a man or a woman, you know, if you're married, you have your spouse. Do you want, you know, another guy to talk to your wife and lollygaggle and go to hotel together? And do you want to see, you know, your husband do the same thing? Going out with another woman? Going to a hotel together? Man, God forbid, right? right. Probably you're gonna, your fist going to come out first. Yes. Because you don't want that to happen, right? right? And then that's why you tell, right? Or you should tell if those <laughs> situations ever create themselves, I'm going to flee. Amen. I have to run away. You can't try to be like, okay, I'm going to reason with that person, okay? I'm going to try to witness to that person. Wrong idea. So if they said they want to meet me at a hotel, okay, I'll meet them at the hotel, right? And then I'm going to have like 20 different types of tracks with my Bible. But that's not what people are going to remember. I mean, that's not what you're going to do fleshly. Right. Because your flesh is weak. Yes. That's why the Bible says abstain from all appearance of evil. I mean, that's why, you know, 2 Timothy 2.22 says flee you for lust. So you have to flee. You know, when you flee, what do you think happens? I mean, you're like, you're disgusted. So you're running away, right? If, you know, a lot of people don't like cockroaches, right? And some people are brave enough to kill it, you know? And if there are cockroaches, they say there are like 10 cockroaches in your room. Okay, you wake up, and there's cockroaches on, you know, on your ceiling, there's cockroaches on your table, there's cockroaches you know, on your chair, 
and there's cockroach right next to you looking at you, right? <laughs> like you, you wake up and you open your eyes and it's right there. What are you going to do? May, at first you're shocked and you freeze, but right away I guarantee you're gonna flee. That's right. You gotta, you gotta get out of that room, yeah. right? And you gotta call someone who could kill it, right? Whether it's your husband, wife, you know, your brother, sister, you know, grandma, grandpa, you know, you're gonna call anybody, right? That's the type of attitude you gotta have when you flee these things. Yeah. You gotta look at it like almost like a cockroach level, yeah. right? Unless you love cockroaches out there, you know, there are a few out there, right? <laughs> they use them as a pet, right? right. Or, yes. you know, like, what is it? Those African hissing cockroaches, you know? I mean, you know, Sarai shaking her head, but there's certain people out there, you know, you know, who don't mind. But majority of the people don't. You know, you're probably scared of even the little tiny German cockroaches, right? which is like about the size of my fingernail, but if you see them, you start running away. When you see those people, these preachers in churches, anybody who ignore the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, who reject the you know, sound doctrine, you have to flee. Amen. What's the point of trying to pollute yourself wherever you are? Yes. Why? Why do you pollute yourself? It's like this. And who wants to step on dungs, right? You know, feces. Nobody wants to, right? right? And it's right in front of you and right next to you. And, you know, sometimes you don't watch while you don't look around. And maybe it's on that seat, right? Maybe some, you know, dog did an accident, boo-boo, right? You didn't know, and you're not paying attention. And then you're like, you know, you sit there, and then, you know, you get the poo, you know, on your clothes and stuff. But if you saw it right there, what are you going to do, right? You know, you're going to, I mean, you, there's a lot of, you know, smart aleck answers, right? Oh, I'm going to clean it up, you know, I'm going to call blood. No, no, but you're going to flee. Right. You don't want to be there, right? You have to flee. If so-called churches do not teach the right doctrine, and you know, coming back to it, you know, who have hatred towards Dr. Ruckman, you have to flee. Amen. No one could ever come out with a right reasoning. I mean, if you want to see deep stuff, if you really want to know what's going on with Ruckmanism, read you know, Dr. Gene Kim's Ruckmanism Ruckus. Yeah. It explains every detail, everything. Only reason these fundamentalists are calling themselves KJB only is because of Dr. Ruckman. In the past, if you were to look at John R. Rice, if you were to look at you know, some other folks from the sword of the Lord, yeah. they didn't believe in the perfect word of God. They're like, where is the original? Right. So you don't believe in the inspired word of God. They, they, they don't. And that's why when pe people, young people go to those schools, what happens? They come out as Bible-rejecting you know, young punks. They think they're smarter. They only go to the Greek and Hebrew. Right. I mean, that's not, that's how not, that will not help you as a Christian. Yes. That will not give you peace of heart. Can you imagine when you're reading the Word of God? And then deep inside, you're, you know that it's not the word of God? How would you ever have conviction? I mean, Bible says, right? These things, I mean, but thou, old man of God, flee these things. We believe it. Cover to cover. Word for word. Every letter. You know, every punctuation. But if you don't believe in the perfect word of God, then you're going to be like, okay, it says flee these things, but I'm going to take it different way. You know, I'm only going to flee certain things. Right. Because, you know, flee these things, you know, you know, in Greek and Hebrew, you know, oh, these okay. might be different types of words, you know. So they're better than God. They're better than the Holy Ghost. Right. When you ever meet those people, unless you are trying to witness to them, they shouldn't be your best friends. They shouldn't be the person that 
you know, instead of people around here, right? Your own Bible-believing brothers and sisters. Yes. They shouldn't be the first person that you call. It's like, hey, you know, I heard from a preacher about this doctrine, right? Doctrine of justification. It's pretty deep. What do you think? And it's all about salvation, brother. It's all about salvation, you know? It's heaven and hell, it's salvation. Hey, you know, what about, you know, this book of Revelation, right? You know, there's New Jerusalem, you know, white throne judgment, but I found out about judgment seat of Christ. It's all about salvation, brother. <laughs> it's all about salvation, right? Just concentrate on salvation, salvation, salvation. Then what's going to happen to you? It's like you have to be well fed. Right? Yeah. I mean, baby food. Who likes baby food? Okay, I see a little baby. I think, you know, one of the girls raising her hand or she's just playing. Oh, there's a girl who hates baby food. It's like you're just eating, constantly eating baby food. I mean, this, you're just eating baby food the whole time as a Christian. I mean, you're just eating baby food. I mean, if for your birthday, I should always get you that. Is it Gerber's or Gerber's, right? <laughs> and then, yeah, I mean, that's all I should give you. Because you don't grow. That's why you have to flee anyone who ignored the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Sometimes it gets very, very hard. And I don't want you to be a jerk about it either, right? You shouldn't be a jerk either, right? But you have to be wise about it too. Mm -hmm. With my association with someone who doesn't believe in the perfect word of God, help me. Just think about it. Little leaven, leaven is the whole lump. Yes. You always have to remember. That's why, you know, some people might think that, oh man, you're you're hardcore, you know, you're mean, you know. That's what they always tell Dr. Rockman, you're mean. Hey. For be, for standing up for the truth. That's good. I mean, for not compromising yes. with the worldly That's ways, right? right? I mean, do you become mean if you know you preach against certain sin sins out there? Why do people think that you're mean when you preach against sin? Why do people think that you're all about love when you, you know, don't preach sin and you protect people, right? Man, if I know that, you know, you hate about certain stuff and I don't preach about it, then you love me more. <laughs> That's a human, human nature, right? True. Uh, right? Oh, man. Sister, you know, brother, your business is going to do well because, you know, all this God's blessing in the Bible, you know, applies to you, Thank you. right? Oh, you're sick? Man, come here, you know, let me punch you in the face Woo! so you'll be healed. Thank you. You know, I mean, let me, you know, hit your head, yes. you know, so that you'll be anointed by the Holy Amen. Ghost. And then, you know, you, you're, <laughs> you're coughing, you want to get rid of your cough? Come here, you know, let's pray together. Let me hit your back of your head, you know, get that coughing devil out of you. I mean, there's, there's so many false doctrines and false preachers out there. And if you know for sure, and if you have any doubts, and you know that according to the Word of God, they're not following the words of Lord Jesus Christ, right. then flee. No reason for you to be here. Yes. No reason you to be, be there if you know it is ignoring the Word of God. And for example... <clears throat> You found out that, hey, it is the right thing to do street preaching. It is the right thing to do visitation, right? Because you got to be out there and do public ministry. But if someone goes, oh, man, it's going to offend the people in our neighborhood. It's going to offend, you know, some of my, you know, buddies, you know, in a church circle, right? Because uh, there are many, many who does not believe in street preaching because they think it's, you know, too hardcore, you know, it rubs you the wrong way, then what are they saying? What are they telling you? They're telling you that I would rather please human beings than please God. I would rather have my fellowship with these human beings better than having closer relationship with Lord Jesus Christ. That's good. That's you and I should be very thankful that we're, we are indeed in a Bible-believing church 
who stands up for King James Bible, independent, out there, true preaching, you know, and, you know, leading souls to the Lord. Yeah. And, you know, you, as you grow, people are going to keep on telling you, you know, you're a Rukmana, you're a Rukmana, right? You know? Because, you know, we follow, you know, because what the Dr. Rukman taught, you know, it's the right thing. You know, God given him, you know, the wisdom in the last days, yes. you know, to teach. Yeah. And the common thing is that they, they might tell you that, hey, you know, King James Bible, you know, Rukman teaches, you know, it's better than, you know, Greek and Hebrew texts yeah. and stuff, you know. I mean, forget about those, right? He's due for the perfect word of God, you know, English language, right? Amen. And then we believe it because from cover to cover, there's no error in it. Yes. Right? And then because we believe in the inspired word of God. Yeah. Right? God preserved his yes. word. Yes. And if that's Rachmanite, then I'm a Rachmanite, Amen. right? Amen. But why do they do it? Because, you know, well, I'll go into it because why? The second thing is you have to flee people who questions and envies. All right, let's go to verse 4. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 4. He is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strives of word, whereof commits envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings. They question, and they are full of envy, and that that's the sign of carnal Christian. Very carnal Christian. Yes. They don't have pure love about anything. That's right. Right? What do they do? Their love is always tainted by flesh. Their main theme of life is covetousness. If you look at anybody at the end of the day who reject the word of God, the perfect word of God, and who reject the sound doctrine, they're mostly covetous people. They're coveting something. A lot of times they're coveting power. They're coveting number of you know, attendees. They're coveting money. They're covering woman or man or anything else nowadays because people are crazy. Yet they're just envious people. You have to flee those people, Amen. right? Yes. Even if it's your own brethren, you have to flee so that they could kind of wake up. Yes. Turn your Bibles to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Sometimes, you know, you and I cannot be comfortable with worldly thinking because when you get complacent and comfortable, you become that person who starts accepting everything. You and I are not here to accept everything. Amen. We accept the truth and we preach against sin. Yes. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, let's look at verse 10. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10, the Bible says, For even when we were with you, this we commended you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. For, if, for we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Oh, Amen. You know, there are a lot of busybodies out there. Right. Right? They're always, you know, on everyone else's business, right? Yes. You know? Verse 12, Now them that are such we commend and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ, that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. Yeah. So if you are a busybody person, you like to be on everybody else's business, be quiet. You, know, you just have to, you know, you just, you just got to keep your mouth shut. Yes. Because if no good things come out of your mouth and you're busybody, oh. you know, be, you got to go back to quietness. And some of it's going to be very hard. That's how you have to pray, and you have to literally do your best, I mean, best, best, to not be a busybody. Verse 13, but ye brethren, be not weary in well-doing. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man, and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. So if, if a brother or sister is not going to obey the word of God, and in many cases, you know, they have many, many chances, right? What does the Bible say? Have no company with that person. 
so that you could win that brother or sister. You know, you don't want to be that person where the person is getting right with the Lord and they're realizing that, hey, something's wrong with me, right? You know, uh, preaching's getting unto me. Maybe there's reason why I'm being isolated. And suddenly you call, hey, you know, what's going on, you know? I mean, for good intention, per se. And you're like, and the goes, you know what, I think something, you know, I think people are avoiding me. Something's not right, you know? Blah, blah, blah. And like, no, it's okay, man, brother. You're, you're fine. You're, you're fine, man. Everybody loves you, you know? I think, you know, devil's trying to get you, you know? You know? And then you're that person devil's using. Right. You know, leave that person alone. Let him get right with the Lord. Yes. You do not want to be that person when person is being hungry for the right reasons, being hungry for the word of God now, getting right with the Lord, and suddenly you throw them this junk food. Hey, eat this. You know, it's okay. Eat it. Right? You know, I love you, man. You know, I love you. It's okay. I know they hate you, even though they're doing it out of godly love. Like, they hate you, you know. I hate them too, you know, sometimes. And then what happens? You know, that's where cliques form. Right. That's where church splits do happen. Why? Because people do not heed to the word of God. People do not flee like you're supposed to and get mingled and tangled for the wrong reasons. Amen. And if you're ever in that situation, you know, go to the word of God. Amen. And if you need some counsel, you know, talk to the you know, pastors and pastor's wife. Don't try to sometimes, like, you do it on your own, and then what happens? You lose that brother or sister, and you lose yourself. Look at verse 15. Yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Yeah. So when those things do happen, it does happen because church or whoever admonished that person as a brother. You know, because you want that person to get right with the Lord. It's just that, you know, as they're getting right with the Lord, about to, and then you don't want to be that person, you know, sticking out your head and then messing it up. And, you know, the rest of it is, you know, self-given. That's why you want to flee, you know, questions, envies, and stripes, and you want to flee those people who encourage and admonish and who wants to always question, who envies and brings about strife. Right. It's inevitable, inevitable that in a, any group setting, especially in a Bible-believing setting, because you know, all of you guys are special to be here. And I'm not trying to puff you guys up. The fact that you're here is that because you love the truth. Yes. And that truth, you know, perfect word of God in a right Bible-believing church. That is a hard thing to do because devil hates you to be you know, a Bible believer. Right. Devil hates the fact that you're here. Yes. But the fact that you're here, you know, it shows something, which means that, you know, a lot of times that's why Bible believers, they think they're crazy, right? You know? But sometimes you do have to have that kind of mind because there are so many, you know, compromising thoughts out there, yes. you could be everywhere else, yes. and then you won't be hated, you know, they won't look at you different, right? When you talk to somebody, you know, hey, we go out there and street preach, what's their first reaction, what? right? Well, yeah, what is it? You <laughs> know, what's street preaching? Or, you know, some people might just think like you're protesters out there, right? With the union picket line, you know, like protesting, you know, wages and stuff. So sometimes it's, they think it's new, right? right? But the fact that you're here, does mean, it does mean that you love the truth. Amen. Then as a person who loves the truth, you have to remind yourself, hey, devil will try to make me destroy what's precious to the Lord Jesus Christ the best way he can. Yes. And if I don't flee those things, I'm going to get in trouble. And this include what again? Things that comes out of your heart. Are you questioning what pastors do at our church? What pastors' wives do at our church? You know, but 
Pastor Cole will preach a great sermon, right? You know, about you know, giving credit to the pastors and pastor's wife, uh, commending them, yes. right? Commending the shepherd, Amen. right? If you do not flee those thoughts, first of all, you have to flee those thoughts, right? But the devil's going to always try to be like, hey, you know, I don't think that's what, how pastors should lead, right? Oh. I mean, they always think that you're better than the pastor, right? You know, people get smart. People get real smart, especially if you start growing in the Word of God. Oh, man, why isn't he teaching this doctrine, right? You know, levels of hell. I, wanna, I want them to know, man, I just learned. I think, man, that, that young man over there, he needs to know. I mean, that, that young man is like five years old. And you're like, he needs to know about, you know, levels of hell, right? And then you start talking about every other deep doctrine. No, there's time and a place for everybody. And then you start questioning. Hey, you know, why are we meeting at 10 o'clock, you know? What can it be like 12, 1, you know? where I could get all my sleep in, you know. You're, you're the same type of person. If, it's, if you come late at 10, you got to come late at 1. It's the same, right? Yes. I mean, if you come early at 10, you got to come early at 1. Yes. So it's the same. You know, it's a behavior is not going to change just because time changes. Yes. And you're like, oh, man, you know, um, pastor's wife is dealing kids, you know, not the way I wanted to deal with it. Then don't be here. Just go somewhere. I'll take him to, you know, Joe Austin's, you know, care, baby care. Or take him to, you know, somewhere else where, you know, they don't get rightly, you know, taught, right? right? If any of those thoughts come, you got to flee. I mean, you got to pray right away. The Lord, you know, the devil's attacking me, you know. And I believe and trust that, you know, you're using our pastor and pastor's wives to, you know, lead the church. If any complaining, murmuring thoughts come to me, Lord, I know it's from the devil. Please take it away from me. You got to pray right away and you got to get rid of it. You got to like hate it. It's like cockroaches coming to my mind, Lord. So I have to run. Help me run, right? Get me that ray so that I could spray it so that it will die, right? (laughs) If those thoughts ever come, then you have to be very careful. It doesn't come for no good reason because you're thinking about it because that was part of your thought. That's why the devil is like, okay, let me see who to choose, you know, from this church to start the strife. Right. Mm, she looks good. He looks good. You know, he looks good. She looks good. Let's see. Let's, let's you know, tempt him a little bit. Let him go through some fire. And then suddenly, like, you know, real self comes up, you know, like, oh, man. Since I came to this, you know, Bible-believing church, you know, Bible Baptist Church International, my life hasn't gone well. Now you start blaming, blaming God, right? And like, oh, man, it's probably because the way pastor and pastor wives are doing. You cannot associate failures of your life to the church right. or to the leaders of the church. Yes. Just because I didn't get that promotion, it's pastor's fault. <laughs> like, oh, man. Man, my kid didn't get into that school. Man, it's pastor's fault. Man, you're, you're too scared to blame pastor. You start blaming pastor's wife, right? Man, it's all pastor's wife's fault. You know, my kid didn't study well. It's pastor's wife's fault. You know, you know, my job didn't go well. It's pastor's wife's fault, right? You know, I'm having a bad hair day. You know, it's pastor's wife's fault. You know, it's like you stop blaming everything. I mean, did you see? I mean, you heard. Pastor Coco preached, right? They, pastor's wife gets stabbed in the back so much, there's no more place to stab in the back. There's no more real estate anymore. Right. Because so many of the congregation, all they do is just stab them in the back, right? Maybe you're that person who doesn't tell nobody, but it's in your heart, and you're, you're at fault too. Yes. Eventually, what's in your heart's going to come out anyways, right? And don't tell me that you're not going to tell nobody. You're a creature that has to talk, yes. which means that you're going to let it out one day, right. whether it's to your wife, husband, your brother, sister, your close friends, or somebody, maybe anonymous, right? 
Whenever you're, you'll be calling anonymous, you know, 800 number, hey man, I hate this pastor, man. I hate this pastor swap, I have to let it out, you know? Just tell the pastor. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like our brother said, you no, know, best thing is that if you have any issues with pastor, pastor wife, you know, you go to them directly. Yes. I mean, everybody's a human being, right? I'm a human being, I make mistakes, everybody makes mistakes, right? right? But you always have to check your heart, own heart. Why do you do what you do? That's good. Is it because of envy? Is it because you just want to question and start strife? Right? I, I'm honestly, I abhor those people who try to create a situation where they think they're not at fault, but make everybody else at fault. <laughs> it's like this. And their young kids don't know anything. Hey. What do you think about pastor? Like, hey, I like pastor. But what about you know, how he dresses? What about this and that? You know? it's like, what do you mean? Well, I don't know. I mean, I felt something. You know? And then you start quiet, making questions just like what the devil did, right? right? Make him start question. And the young man goes, hey, 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 mom, dad. You know? It's like, you know, I think something smells fishy. And then you know, it affects the parents. And then parents start talking to other parents, you know. And then at the end of the day, this guy gets like all the fault, right? But the person who brought it up is laughing in the back, <laughs> you know. I, mean, I started all of this, but you know, I'm not even getting, you know, blamed for it. But that's half. But God reveals everything, though. Don't think that you're gonna get away with it, right? You know, there's nothing, you know, under the sun, you know, that's not gonna be revealed. That's why it is very important. You have to flee your thoughts and heart where it envies and questions, brings strife, especially against pastors and pastors' wife. And then secondly, of course, your brethren. Right? You guys are going to live together eternally. Uh, there's no if and buts about it. Right? Yes. I mean, whether you like each other or not, right? You're going to live eternally because you trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Why do you want to have envy and question strife towards each other? I mean, there, <coughs> uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> uh, I mean, it is even make me cough, even just talking about it, right? Uh, why? You have so many other things to do, honestly. Yes. You have things to study. There's so much Bible to study. Right. There's so many lost souls out there. Yes. There's so many people that you need to pray for. Yes. You don't want to waste your time exactly. having thoughts of envies and strives yeah. amongst brethren. Right. right? Yeah. Man, I know devil's going to give those thoughts to you. Because not everybody is a mature Christian. We have a very levels of Christians. Yes. There's going to be carnal Christians out there. You know, it's inevitable. But you shouldn't be the one who's always thinking about that carnal Christian. Let God deal with it. Yes. I mean, go like, you know, he's not getting rid of his earrings. <laughs> like, you're, you're getting frustrated, right? <laughs> Just let it be, okay? Because some places will go really, really, you know, they will lose a brother or sister because of their unwise ways. Right. Like, you know, when those thoughts come, just flee in. He just got saved. Amen. Yes. And, you know, he had 30 earrings, 15 each, but now he only has 10 each. Right. He's got 20. It's improving. Yes. Give him time. Good start. You know, when those thoughts come, just flee. Right. When those brothers come or sisters come and start complaining to you about, man, the earrings, you know, the makeup, you know. Okay, if they've been coming to church for 30 years okay. and, you know, they still haven't gotten right with the Lord, different story. But yeah. if they just started baby Christians, right, you have to be wise about it. Yeah. And then with that help the brother or would that hurt the brother? You always have to think, 
You know, would that hurt the sister or would it help the sister? Me having this thought, whatever thought it may be that you're having, will that hurt the brother or would that hurt the sister? If in any ways it's going to hurt that person, then get rid of it. Hey. Don't think of it, right? Yeah. You're like, man, whatever it is, I mean, there's so many things that you could gossip about, you could think about, right? You think worst about the person, but when those thoughts do come, you know, you have to flee it. You know, you have to flee those thoughts. Yeah. It's like because nothing good's gonna come out of it. If you dwell in those thoughts, then what's going to happen? Then you're gonna. I mean, obviously, devil don't want you guys to hear this preaching, right? right. Especially, you know, when it comes to talking about brothers and sisters. Right. At least, you know, maybe, you know, thinking about pastors and pastor wives, maybe you guys got it okay now. That's why it didn't stop. Man, but man, it must be when it comes to brothers and sisters, man, something's happening in your heart. Don't look at them like you're better than them. Just because you've been here longer than them, don't look down on them. Man, that's the worst thing to do. You don't know where they came from. You don't know what their circumstances are. Are you them? You're not. You're not me and I'm not you. So I shouldn't be like, okay, you should be at my level or vice versa. Everybody's at different level. So get rid of those envy because how the devil fall in the first place in Ezekiel? Because of envy. And because of envy, you know, he, he left everything, right? And that's the same thing he's going to use. Yes. Why do you think church is split? Because of envy. They start having this carnal, fleshly love towards what they like. Then what happens? You start wanting it. You become covetous. That's why it is critical, very important for you to always think is this thought hurting my brother or sister? It's as simple as that, right? If it hurts that brother or sister don't think it no more. It's simple. If it's yes or no, then don't do it. A lot of times it's yes or no. Very few instances is great, right? A lot of times when you think about a brother or sister is for good or is for bad, right. right? And if the brother or sister is struggling, just pray for them. Amen. That's all you got to do. You don't need to call, have a family meeting. Okay, let's discuss about this brother. <laughs> let's discuss about this sister, right? You know, just, just pray for that person, right? You don't want to be that person who spreads the fire, right? You know, fire is a very, very, very scary thing, as you know. Yes. That's why people will be judged by fire. When fire spreads, and when the Lord let it spread, there's no stopping. Not, not, not in the whole world. And there's nobody in the world who's going to be able to stop when fire spreads and Lord lets it spread. When your envious thoughts and words start spreading, it's going to be like a fire. Once you start, you don't know when it's going to stop. Then who's going to be responsible for all of those hurts, all of those you know, tears, and all of those you know, discouragements and disappointments, right? And people who leave the church because of it, it comes down to you. I, mean, I have more points, but you know, due to time. I mean, I think those are two critical points. Again, flee these things. Flee those who ignore the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. If they don't stand for right doctrine, and they don't preach right doctrine, then you have to flee. Yes. Amen. You could have been there for 40 years. If you realize it now, flee. Yes. Right? And flee questions, envies, and strives. If there's a, any, any envy towards pastor or pastor wife, your thoughts, flee. People who does it, flee. And then secondly, your brothers and sisters, your thoughts flee, and those who do it 
fully so that in that case, you know, you could admonish him as a brother so that you could win the brother, right? Yes. But more above all, you want to do it. Why? Because it's Lord's command. Amen. It pleases the Lord. It pleases Lord who bought his local church with his own precious blood. Thank you, Jesus. Let's flee these things. Let's pray. Dear Father, we live our Christian life a lot of times lackadaisically, not understanding and realizing that we're in this spiritual battle. And the devil constantly attacks us. And one of the best ways that he'll do is make us start compromising little by little and make us blend in. Lord God, we don't want to blend in, Lord. We want to be that sore spot out in the world, preaching the word, standing for the truth, whether wherever, on the street, on the pulpit, wherever we are. Lord God, help us to flee things that you want us to flee, Lord, and help us to flee those envious thoughts, especially towards you know, our pastors and pastors' wives and our brethren, Lord God. And help us to not be swayed by wrong doctrines, but be grounded in sound doctrine. Lord God, please, I pray that you'll be with everyone here. Continue to protect everyone from you know, sickness and illness and those who need to get well. Please heal them. And we thank you, Lord, for always protecting us and providing our needs, Lord God. And I pray that we'll be a great witness for you out there, keeping pure, honest, and great testimony for you. Bless the rest of the day, Lord. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, everyone.